Now let's talk about the unfair advantage that you had compared to most people. You were able to land interviews at so many of these companies. You were able to get fast tracked in Microsoft. What set you apart from most people? So one of the things that definitely set me apart was the tech job market sucks right now. Thousands of people getting laid off, hiring freezes, internships literally getting canceled weeks before they're starting. And despite all of that, Ume here has successfully landed a Microsoft software internship for the summer. So in this video, we're gonna be breaking down exactly how she did it, her resume, application interview process, and also the work she's gonna be doing at Microsoft. On top of that, we're gonna be exploring the unfair advantage that had recruiters reaching out to her on LinkedIn DMs from companies like Amazon, Palantir, Roblox to invite her for interviews. So first of all, well, Ume, thank you so much for being here. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here and to talk to you all about my tech journey and what got me into Microsoft. For sure. And starting out right away, could you introduce yourself? Yeah, definitely. So hi, everyone. My name is Ume. I'm a senior at Maryland studying information and computer sciences. Over the past couple of summers, I've worked at JP Morgan Chase and Cisco Meraki as a full stack software engineer. And this upcoming summer, I'll be working at Microsoft as a backend engineer. Additionally, I was also a semifinalist for the Forbes under 30 class of 2024 last year, which is really exciting. So hopefully I'll be able to make the list next year and be a finalist. Nice, nice. And I guess going right into it. So Microsoft software internship, big tech company. Can you kind of go over the application interview process? Yeah, definitely. So I applied back in August when the application first opened via the application portal, as most people do. And I hadn't heard anything for months. So I honestly thought that I was rejected or I was being ghosted because in the past I've applied and that's exactly what's happened. So in late November, I was actually sent an email saying that I was moved on to the final round of interviews. And for a second, I definitely thought it was a scam, but it turns out that I actually was moved on to the final round and I just did two back-to-back 45-minute -back interviews. And those interviews, technical, behavioral, what were they like? Yeah, so like I said, there were two back-to-back 45-minute -back interviews. The first half of each interview revolved around dissecting my resume and also just typical behavioral questions. And of course, I was given the infamous why Microsoft question. The second half of the interviews were very technical. So the first interview, I had a leak code easy slash medium question. And then the second interview, I had a more theoretical question, which I would describe as a more leak code hard question. Yeah, nice. So first of all, this is pretty insane. Just going from application to final round, right away. So I know you had a particular advantage that we'll get into later on, but for the general rule of thumb, what is the application interview process like if you aren't fast tracked to the final round? So how it usually works is that after you apply and you move past the resume screening, you'll be presented with an online assessment. If you move past that, you'll be presented with a phone screen with a recruiter. So they'll be presented with regular behavioral questions and they'll just get to know you a little bit more better to see if you're a good fit to move forward onto the technical interviews. From then on, it really depends on the person. I've known folks who have had one technical interview after the phone screen, and then I've also known folks who have had two or three technical interviews after the phone screen. But usually how they're laid out is kind of like how mine was laid out, where you'll have a 45 minute interview and the first half will be all behavioral, dissecting your resume, and then the second half will be more leak code style. Nice, nice. And how long after your final round interview did you get the offer? Yeah, so I interviewed on a Thursday and I got my offer that Tuesday, that next Tuesday. Wow, really fast. <laughs> and speaking of dissecting resumes, you actually sent your resume and let's show the audience and go over it. Yeah, definitely. So I split my resume up into four different sections. The first one being education. I think that's important. If you have any educational accolades, you can put that in there and any relevant coursework. The second is professional experience. That's where you have more of your paid professional experiences. So I have all my software internships and a couple other non-software related internships. And then I had leadership and extracurriculars. If you're involved in school in any sort of way, if you're in clubs, if you hold positions within clubs, you can put that in there. I have all of my teaching assistant positions there and also my undergraduate research. And then last but not least, I have all of my skills in this section. So I have the software languages that I know and also foreign languages. If you know any, you can put that in there as well. Nice. And something that I really like about your resume is for one, the formatting is very consistent in terms of the bolding, italicizing, but also everything is very relevant. Even in your programs and awards, a lot of people like to put out like random clubs that they work on in college campuses, which is fine if you don't really have 
have that many experiences. But as you build up, you want to exclusively have tech experiences or something really impressive like Forbes 30 under 30. I've also found that over the years, as I've developed my personal brand, I've kind of wanted to make this storyline around who I am and what I do. I kind of tailor my resume towards that. So a lot of what's on my resume speaks towards my developmental experience, but also a lot of my advocacy work with DEI and also just giving back to nonprofits as well. Are there any particular things within your resume that help you stand out? Yeah, definitely. So if you go to the JP Morgan section of my resume, you can see that I've listed a couple of the languages that I used during my experience, but I also said how I used it. So I said I created a virtual chatbot called Casey, and then I also kind of quantified those impacts a little bit and also just talked a little bit more about what I did and what impact it had. Yeah, I really like that. So you use these languages to actually do something. Don't just like list them. Another thing, what are common mistakes that people make on their resume? One of the most common mistakes that I see people put on their resumes is they usually have a paragraph describing who they are as a person, what they're looking for. And this paragraph usually runs six to seven sentences. And in my opinion, I think your experiences speak for themselves. So you usually don't need that paragraph saying, Ooh, is a senior at Maryland studying this, this, and this. If you just have your university, you have your graduation date, you have your major, I think that's good enough. And your experiences speak for themselves. So it usually tells the recruiter, the hiring manager, exactly who you are as a person and what they can expect out of you. Yeah, sometimes I see people say about section seeking software internship for 2024. And I always say like the recruiter knows what you're applying for based off the position you're applying for. You don't need to mm -hmm. verbalize that. Yeah. All right. So bringing the discussion back to Microsoft, what are you going to be doing this summer? So on a high level, I will be working on the hybrid networking team, specifically an express route. I will be focusing more on the back end side of development this summer. So a lot of the work that I'm going to be doing is focused on C sharp versus what I've been doing in the past, which revolved a lot more on the front end side, JavaScript, React, etc. And what is your pay and perks looking like? Yeah, so my salary this summer is $50 an hour. Because I didn't choose Microsoft corporate housing, I also got a $10,000 allowance to choose housing on my own. So I had to look for housing on my own. Additionally, I got a $300 commuting allowance and also a $1,000 internship allowance. Wow, that's just a lot of money thrown at you. But I know on top of all that, there are some perks at these big tech companies like Microsoft, right? Yeah, so I'm not exactly sure of what the perks look like in the Seattle office, but in the California office, you get free lunch, you have a free gym, and there's also a cafe on campus. Wow. All right, sweet. So now let's talk about the unfair advantage that you had compared to most people in that you were able to land interviews at so many of these companies. You were able to get fast-tracked in Microsoft. What set you apart from most people? So one of the things that definitely set me apart was attending company-specific events. For example, this past September, I attended the first ever Microsoft DMV mock interview event and a lot of recruiters were at this event as well as PMs and software engineers. Although I didn't mock interview for a software engineering position, I interviewed for a PM position, I was still able to network with so many folks who worked at the company, not just engineers, not just PMs, but also recruiters themselves people that would be looking at my resume. Mm -hmm. You know, they always say it's not about what you know, it's who you know, but I actually say in tech, it's both. You gotta know your stuff, but you also have to know your people. You get the people with the right connections to get the interview, but to actually pass the interview, you have to know the stuff. So you were able to do both. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice. Well, Ume, thank you so much for being here today. I really hope that this was beneficial to y'all. And make sure to check out Ume's socials. They'll be linked in the description below. And if you guys like this video, hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you guys next time.